I was checking out what Barbie was up to. I couldn't see little sister, but guess where little sister is? She's down in the lower section and she's got a bee. Okay, that's a that's a honey bee there, and little sister is on top there. She's not moving, I dare say she's feeding. But crikey's, I wonder how she captured that bee. The beep has been removed from this video, and as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep, beep. So little sister can be seen in there, she's with that bee, quite miraculous, and I also noticed that the webs are set out now, they're coming down all the way out here, out to this bit of grass here, all the trap webs would be set up underneath Barbie's home, and when I take a look inside Barbie, the red back spider's home, I notice that she has got a snail. Now, it has me pondering, do the red back spiders actually grab a snail when they want something to eat? There's Barbie down there. This is just a few days after taking that eighth redback spider egg sack. I dare say she's uh, building up to generate another one fairly shortly. If you peek past the snail there, looking at that brown circle, down below that is the bee and little sister having an amazing feed on a honeybee. Guess who's out with me, Mrs. Inquisitive. Well, there's never a boring time when you're looking at Barbie the Redback Spider and Little Sister. I'll get the lid back on here, it is night time, and maybe I'll go on to talk about what I'll be doing with the Redback Spot egg sacs that I've been collecting from Barbie. I've had many people ask, Leo, can you please do another spider tank, but I'd like to do something totally different. And hopefully that way we learn things along the way. Spider Tank 3 uses a very different way to stop the spiders from getting out through the gauze in the top. I've used a fridge mat and that has been siliconed around the top there so there's no little gaps or anywhere where small spiders can escape. It's a totally clean environment. There is no dirt on the ground and critters hiding in that dirt. There is a water bowl there so there is moisture in this environment. On the structure inside there are plenty of places for spiders to set up homes. There's also a section on one side where you could call it a safe zone. So maybe some spiders would like to live in there away from this spider set up in the middle. And in a very simple way, what this spider tank is about is putting in Barbie the Redback Spider's egg sacs that I've been collecting into the top there. And I've also found a black house spider egg sac and that was a nest that was inside our house. The black house spiders are very common around our place. And from what people say online and people have told me on YouTube is the black house spiders will take out a redback spider. Mind you, in my mind, they live in two totally different environments. Now, thinking back to Spider Tank 2, I took a lot of time-lapse footage that was never seen on YouTube. There's stacks and stacks of video of what the redback spiders were doing as Spider Tank 2 evolved. Of course, you get to the point where the red back spider egg sacs start to hatch, and then you have hundreds and hundreds of red back spider spiderlings doing what they do, and what they do is they tend to eat each other. From what I witnessed going on in Spider Tank 2 time lapse footage, was the fate of most red back spiderlings is little brother or sister will come along one day and decide, well, you're the next best thing to have for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And in Spider Tank 2, there ended up being one spider left after all those spiders were in there. It became quite a famous spider on my channel and a YouTuber called Winter Knight named that spider Bindi. But Bindi the Redback Spider's fate was very complex because I kept adding things into the tank and there was also other critters, quite dangerous ones, that were living down in the soil. And sometimes, and especially in nature, it's the things that you don't see that can be often the most dangerous. What I vividly remember from Spider Tank 1 and 2 is the spiderling phase is fairly short-lived. You're always vulnerable when you're a baby, and the trick is, is to eat something else around you and not be that baby for too long. I'm not sure whether natural selection plays out in the spider realm, when I was looking at Spider Tank 2, I would see one spiderling basically just almost jump on the one next to it and decide, well, that's the next meal for me. 
It was almost like witnessing random acts of unkindness. It wasn't to me like one spider was smarter or more evil than the one next to it. I think it's more about winning the lottery and a lot of chance and lucky things to happen for you to progress to be that adult spider. And I say that because you might be the most evil wired spider who survived to a certain point and then the next thing a skink sees you and snap, you're gone, your history, and then your smartness can't be passed on to the next brood of spiders. Anyway, I'm sure there's someone far, far smarter than me who's worked all that out. They've probably been given massive government grants to work out whether spiders are psychos. So anyway, Spider Tank 3, in theory, there'll be one spider left out of all of the spiderlings that will develop within this tank. And I don't think I'll be putting any food in here. It'll just be a spider feeding from another spider until there is one. Who knows, the spider tank may develop a couple of winning spiders, which will then develop the next generation of spiders through the young that they will develop. It's a complete unknown. It's an experiment I just want to see play out from starting off a spider tank with only just the spider eggs and nothing else. Anyway, let's go back to Barbie and Little Sister the next morning after I saw Little Sister sucking on that bee. Well, I'm a curious sort of person. I dare say you may be curious as well. I'll just drop my morning coffee here. It is the next morning. And I'm just going to see how Little Sister looks, if I can see her, after she's uh, munching down on that bee. Always check the lid. And uh, hopefully we'll see where she's up to in here. Well, I can tell you one thing, Little Sister is um, fast becoming Big Sister. She's much bigger than just a few days back. I'm always fearful Little Sister's just going to become Barbie the Redback Spider's dinner one night. That's the way uh, these spiders work. And there's little sister. Oh, well, look at that. She's going for it. Yeah, she's showing some very young flair. Go, little sister, go. You can certainly see the way little sister is wide, and that's how little sister's got to be this size. She's a very impressive young redback spider. It won't be long, and she's going to be, well, quite large, if she can survive the fangs of Barbie, the redback spider. I'm thinking of Barbie, she's right down the bottom there. I'll just see how she's going to go with a bit of tweezer action. Oh yeah, watch out. She would snap all those tweezers in an instant. She's primed, ready for summer. And right now, we're only a few days away from the equinox, which is would be our true start of spring. Look at that. She thinks those tweezers are her next meal. Or maybe she remembers, hey, those tweezers stole my children. Mind you, I think redback spiders have got memories like goldfish. Maybe I'm wrong there. I'm sure someone in the audience will know. Oh, crikey, she's coming up this way. No, you don't, Barbie. You stay down there. I've always got to remember that if Barbie wants to, she can move with lightning speed up my tweezers onto my hand. As for the snail, okay, it's still there, but it's not in the web. It's now on the side of Barbie's and little sister's home. I don't think redback spiders feed on snails. I might be totally wrong there. I have not really caught Barbie feeding from a snail or a redback spider feeding from snails. I've often been near each other, but not feeding. Uh, let me just put this lid back on here. We'll have a very quick look underneath Barbie and Little Sister's home down that way. Underneath Barbie and Little Sister's spider home, you can see the, the critters that they've been feeding on. I believe that's the beetle that I tried to give Barbie as a distraction when I was grabbing the egg sack. There's actually two bees here. I don't know which one little sister was feeding on last night. I'm pretty sure that's a bee. Okay, and there's another bee there. I hope I'm correct there. It's uh, astonishing to see they're getting into the bees. And there is another mystery critter here. And the thing about the way these spiders work is when you touch these little critters here, there's just nothing left, they're just hollowed out. They're just the shell of what they used to be. Uh, it must be <laughs> an incredibly horrible way to go if you've been eaten by a spider. They just suck everything out of whatever they're eating and just leave a carcass like this.